Well, first and foremost, it's I need to apologize. Sorry it's been so long that I've uploaded a video. But the Samantha build is still going on. And I just got in a ton of products. Like, I think the biggest order I've ever done in my life of products. I got a stellar deal from Irate 4x4. They have a discounted section for paying members of their um, on the website. Check it out, irate4x4.com. Become a Red Skull member. Go to their parts bin and you can get discounts on products. That's what I did and it really paid off. Really, really, really. Also go check out the Wheeling Wine and Whiskey episode where Jason from Wheeling Wine and Whiskey and I interview uh, Austin from All Right, I Rate 4x4. A uh, great, great episode. So what's going on now? Samantha's continuing. I still have, I just got in a whole ton of products for, and now we're gonna be installing everything and fabbing things up. Where are we gonna start? We're gonna start in the rear. At the rear axle is what we're doing now, mainly because the rear axle is gonna be on leaf springs, and the leaf springs are gonna set the height of the frame and then when we do the three link in the front, which is what I'm gonna be doing, we can adjust the three link to match what we got in the rear. Now, I've got a lot of little things that I'm gonna be doing on the rear axle and the rear suspension that I really have not seen anybody do before. I guess the next obvious question is, what rear axle am I actually gonna be running? Well, I'm gonna be running a Toyota IFS rear axle. That's the rear axle underneath the IFS mini trucks. Um, I picked one up not too long ago from the junkyard. Um, it had the third member in it, still had the actual actual shafts and drum brakes. I took those out already. So I'm gonna drop out this third member and I'm gonna rip this thing apart, clean it up. I'm gonna grind it smooth and clean and pretty so that I can start cutting it up and getting ready to weld on it. I've finished all the grinding on this axle that I'm gonna be doing right now, but I did gouge it in a few places. So what I'm gonna to have to do is go grab the little welder, pull that out, fill in the gouges, and then grind those smooth once again. Then I can go start on cutting the bottom side of this axle, and I'm gonna take this chunk out here, and I'm gonna put in a bigger, thicker plate so when I hit rocks, it's not gonna ding this axle up. I got a nine inch diameter pipe and I cut it into quarters because I'm gonna use a chunk of this for plating the bottom of my axle. I'm not sure if you can see that, but it is a little tight. So if you're gonna get a, um, a pipe like this, I'd look at maybe a foot long or a foot diameter uh, pipe. So what I'm gonna do is I've got, I drew these lines on here. I'm gonna score this with the grinder and a, a flapper disc, not a, flat, a cutting wheel. And I'm gonna grind it down a little ways and then I'm gonna pry this open till it perfectly matches the bottom of this axle. Then I'm gonna cut a slice out of the axle. I'm gonna put this in, weld it all up. Then I got a good bash plate on the underside of this axle that will protect me from any rocks. When doing this, I am gonna lose the drain. I'm not concerned with that. These things always get banged up, dinged up. You can't undo them. The socket never fits over it or the Allen head doesn't fit in it. So it's not gonna be a big deal to lose this. I'm just gonna use these, I'm gonna make them into bolts, and I'm gonna use that as the drain plugs. Good morning. Uh, another day here in real life, a few minutes later for you guys, but uh, this uh, plate has cooled. All the welding is all nice and cool. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grind it all smooth so we have plenty of clearance inside that axle, and then we're gonna be putting this in. So it's gonna be a fun few steps. I'm a little excited and a little worried that I don't 
blast out some holes on the side of this um, when I'm welding it through. I'm not the best best welder, but uh, this is definitely a project that I think I can tackle. So let's see if I don't mess it up too bad. While the axle's cooling, I figured I could actually start working on the back side of Samantha's frame. I'm gonna throw a jack right here in the middle and I'm actually gonna have to take this stand off completely because I'm gonna be using these sliders, these from Liquid Force, these uh, sh instead of shackles, I'm gonna work with these sliders, try them out, see how they work. But they're gonna have to be way back here, almost uh, maybe even all the way to the end of the frame. So I've gotta cut off the old mounts for the shackles, which were the stock ones. And to do so, I've gotta remove the trailer mount setup, which is already loose, it's just sitting here holding it up. And then I can get down here to start cutting these things off. So let's see, I'm gonna lift this guy up. Yep. And now we can pull this guy off. These bolts came off loose a long time ago when I was taking the bumper off. Because this hitch receiver has this reduction right here, what that did is it went around right here and I couldn't slide it all the way out because it was hitting this and I couldn't go down because it was hitting the bracket or the shackle mount that I'm about to cut off. So that was a pain in the butt. Before I start grinding those down, I'm going to run back outside and do a little bit more welding and then come back in here, start cutting these off and kind of bounce back. A lot of you out there were probably yelling at your screen just a minute ago and I for the most part am learning what I am doing I had my good buddy Hussman come over hustle nuts Jason Hussman and he was like what are you doing stop don't weld anymore and I was like why what's the matter and he said don't weld the truss up while it's on the axle get take the truss off weld it up first then weld it to the axle because all the heat that I'm going to be putting into the just welding the truss is going to hit the axle and it could warp the axle and that's the number one thing that I don't want to do is warp this axle so I appreciate having friends that know more than me I don't like doing things twice but I do like doing them right so today I'm going to be flipping this guy over and cutting all the welds that I've already put on here to take this thing off. And then I'm thinking I might fab up a little uh, welding table um, so I can cinch this down and weld it nice and tight so that it won't bend or warp while it's just on the table cooling and then I'll weld it to the axle. So today is gonna be a little bit of uh, backtracking but it's gonna be better overall and smarter for us to do. So I'm gonna get to cut it.
Got it off. It took a little bit more work than I expected, but that's good because that means my welds were pretty strong. Um, now that it's off, I'm gonna clean the axle back up. Uh, I'm probably gonna have to grind it down and weld in some of the cuts that I put in there. Then I'm gonna fill in the rest of this housing or the truss and weld that all up. Um, but that's gonna be probably a little bit later. I think I'm gonna make a fab table, a little one. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do. Uh, but next steps really to clean this axle up. So let me uh, go back to grinding away and cleaning this axle up once again. And then maybe we can move forward. Here's my welding setup. Yes, it's on a shopping cart. Um, it's great to uh, have in the shop and easy to move around, but I got this little Lincoln 140 and it works great for almost everything and almost everything I've ever done until now. I've been having issues Either this metal is too thick, well I think it's just thicker than anything I've really ever tried to weld for an extended period of time, and or this machine is having problems. I drew these two marks right here, one there and one up there, and I was only able to go that far before my machine turned off. And it like blew a fuse or blew, blew this little button in the back. Um, I think it's hitting its duty cycle is my guess. So I'm gonna take this over to my buddy Jason's house and um, I'm highly expecting him to tell me to cut it all out and we're gonna just start over and um, weld a fresh new patch on there. He's got a much better welder. He is a much better welder and I'm planning on learning a lot today from him and hopefully coming home with this thing fully welded up um, so I can then put it onto the axle housing. axle's been cleaned up, everything's been cut off that we didn't need. We put the gussets and armor on, welded it all back together. Uh, we just really have to start assembling this axle. And this video has gotten a little long, so I'm gonna break this up into two segments and we're gonna assemble in the next video. And we're just gonna stop this one right here. But if you do want to follow along with this build, make sure that you're checking out the links below. Um, if you wanna watch this series from the beginning check out the Samantha video that's going on right over here and if you have any other suggestions or advice for me while I'm doing this build I'm always open please leave a comment down below and like always my friends keep crawling